Hey guys and welcome to another Cambridge pinstriping episode and today we're gonna paint this beautiful bike we're gonna keep it kind of classy but uh, uh, the point of this video I want to show you some tips and and I'll show you some little tricks that I use during the painting process and that's through you know primer to base coat and clear coat so um, sit back relax and hopefully you can pick up a thing or two. Um, this bike had some uh, damage in the back, had some obviously that needs to be filled in, this hose you're looking at. Um, that's where the number plate was and, and the light. It also has been re-rendered by a car I believe very gently. So that will have to be fixed up, welded up and I've dealt with all this um, out of camera. But everything else here it's pretty much captured so uh, let's have a look what kind of plan we're gonna come up here. Enjoy! John, the owner of the bike, delivered all the parts to me. I had to strip them down pretty much to bare metal, not all of it, but majority, and prepare for paint, um, for primer. That was stage one, pretty boring process, not worth filming, but uh, we can take it from there. Stage two, everything has been covered in Primer, grey primer or a sealer, depending how you want to call it. I use two in one. And now um, I'm in a stage of removing the high spots and some deep scratches I left previously. I didn't see them before, so as you can see, they're coming very, very profound. If you put some guide code on it, a few minutes of elbow grease later, or the major scratches, I'm gone. I'm going to carry on just to get rid of all the hot spots. Um, I'm gonna do the same bit on the petrol tank and bring mud guard and then we'll be ready for a base coat. Let me show you quickly guys how quickly these high spots appear and how quickly with the right tools you can get rid of them. You can see the difference in the guide coat. I use a dry powder guide coat. Helps me to uh, visualize them where they are. And with a crisscross pattern, it pretty much got on this spot. That's all real time, by the way. Yeah, no speeding up, no messing about. There you go, guys. This area is gone. Nothing here. Couple of tiny bits, and on the other end, you can see how terrible it looks comparing to that. But it doesn't take long to get rid of them again, real time. Crisscross pattern. I'm using 600 grit sandpaper and they're nearly gone that's it guys sorted I'm gonna carry on for the whole petrol tank and we take it from there so I'm ready to apply the base coat and the order was for a black and white two-tone well, let's face it, anybody can pluck it just white. It's in my garage, it's gonna get extra treatment. So what I've got here, I've got Aston Martin White Pearl, which comes in two stage, white base, and a beautiful pearl, pearl color, which you can't see in that tube, but I spray directly on top of that white base, and I give it that extra, extra pop. But I'll show you just in a minute. Here I'm mixing the uh, base color, the first stage white. It's 50-50 uh, with uh, um, paint thinners. I'm applying the first few coats of uh, stage one Aston Martin paint. And they are all completed now, all parts. And this is the pearl, the second stage of the uh, Aston Martin pearl white. You can see how beautiful that is. Obviously it will not cover anything on its own. It needs to have the white base for it, but it shines beautifully. Um, in the sunlight and again it's 50 50 mixing ratio um, with uh, paint thinners and here everything has been applied I'm trying to show you with a light torch from a mobile phone and uh, kind of trying to imitate 
the sunlight, which I'm not doing a very good job, but you get the idea. You see how it kind of supposed to look like if I can operate the camera properly. All parts have been covered, rear front mudguard and the petrol tank. And just before the final artwork, we have it all masked off with a 3mm fine line tape and I blocked the whole thing over here. Um, with the other side, we're going for a classic design, uh, black and white, well it's going to be uh, pearl black and Aston Martin white over here with pearlescent um, effect as you saw it. But this is the next step and the rear market as well over here ready for the coat of black. And this black blob you see over here, it's an old school Yamaha logo, very old school Yamaha logo. Uh, I've cheated a little bit because you need to have same logo on each side, so I've cut a stencil and I stuck it on here. You can't really see it right now, well you kind of can, but this little bastard took me two hours to cut and it's just one side. And I need, uh, I need both sides, but we're there now, we're there now and I'll show you when it's ready. Oh yeah, everybody likes some masking and uh, having a really sharp effect as well between black and white, the highest contrast you can probably get in the art world. But I think I pulled it off pretty damn good. I'll leave you to it guys, enjoy. There we go, Yama Dragon. It has now been clear coated. Nice and solid. However, it's got some uh, rather disturbing texture on it. It's just the first layer of clear. I didn't use any thinners for it. And you can you can tell when the two paint um, join together. That's just a very first step of it. So all I need to do is just uh, cut it, as in sand it down and uh, make it ready for a uh, for a flow coat, same goes with mod guards and, and side panels, but you know, float coat is a very bare minimum I do to prepare it for uh, if it needs to be final polish. Beer bucket, so I've got my beer bucket full of water and I, I like to pre-soak uh, my sandpaper. I'm using 600 grit right now. I like to pre-soak it a couple of hours, uh, at least overnight if I can. Um, and I've already got started on the side panels. As you can see, it's uh, it's getting there. Uh, I literally just started. Um, I'm gonna carry on until everything has got nice and smooth surface on it. Same with the uh, mud guards and petrol tank. Off we go, some elbow grease, and the guys, I'll show you when it's done. There's one thing I want to show you guys halfway through. Um, I'm using a red scotch pad uh, for hard to get places or like corners and, and curvatures of the bodywork when sandpaper just wouldn't work or would cut too much. Um, this is, goes nicely around, you know, uh, corners and round corners like we have over here. And then actually corners just round, you know, shapes. In, and over here, sandpaper we just cut through that and create some odd shapes. This adopts nicely um, and you can also use it on a flat surface after you've done sandpaper just to dress it nicely and I use it in one direction when I have two hands and hold it obviously uh, I dress it nicely use it one direction you know on, on, on my sanding and that will create nice and even uh, scratches uh, in, uh, in, in the surface underneath so the clear coat when it goes on top of it um, you won't be so visible if you go all over the shop you know one way and the other way you can kind of still spot them um, underneath scratches and, and the clear coat adopts differently but if you dress everything when you finish sanding it down one way you know a couple of times um, it creates a uniform surface and that is important because the float coat goes on top of it very rarely I need to polish it you know I polish I polish this part but the flow coat most likely gonna be as it is you know because there's gonna be no orange peel on it or nothing so uh, we'll see how it goes Guys, here it is what I meant by directional sanding. I've done on my hard work 
with a with a sandpaper, the salt block. So I went my cross pattern this way and the other way and all the edges and everywhere I could. But then I got my Scotch bride red one, and I'm going through the heart to get places again. Plus I'm trying to dress it so it looks visually better, so I can lay the the flow coat, and it will look better even though it doesn't make a huge difference. But it I always do it this way and I've got a good results. So what I mean by directional sanding, you just dress everything this way basically. I apply a little bit more pressure because with the other hand I can hold the actual unit so it doesn't move. But this is what I mean by directional sanding. Um, this is just a strix from a um, uh, soapy liquid I've got. But you get the point, you know, you, you apply smooth strokes across the whole surface and it's obviously longest this way so i'm applying it that way so make it less visible i'm not going sideways i'm not going cross patterns and circles smooth directional sanding and the whole appearance is going to look just slightly just a little bit more better just a little bit just up your game ever so slightly to make the end result just this much better he all counts in the end. One more very last tip, if I may. Um, when you're directionally sanding that last thing with, a, with that scotch bright, don't go like this, you know, and then move on. It's still one direction, but you're just messing about in places. So what do you want to do? You want to be brave with it, just long strokes. Keep a little bit of pressure on it and just keep going across the whole surface if you can. It's not always possible, but if you can, that would just produce a much better surface from underneath for whatever coming next. And if you can produce a uniform surface like this, the top coat gonna just look this much better. And that's all it that counts. This is the rear mud guard before I even sand it down. I mean, this is the very first layer of clear coat. That's how it looks. And this is how we're looking after we took all the shine off. It's pretty much uniform everywhere. Just a little bit more work left over here. As you can see, I want to make it super flat everywhere. But other than that, you know, the main surface is looking pretty good. Obviously, them corners I will uh, revisit once again. And you can see what I meant by the uniform uh, directional sanding. You got really nice surface over here. You know, um, there's a bit of water still happening here. But this spot, I was sanding back and forth just to get to the groove without sanding too much of, a, of that surface down. So you can see it's a little bit messed up. So again, I need to come back with my red scotch bright and just, you know, go uniform this way. So it looks like this. And when you lay uh, your flow coat, your top, top clear on top of that it's just gonna make just a little bit more better just a little bit more better just to up your game I'll show you what it's done and that's how it look like clear coated it nah no, it's only wet I'm shitting you but that's how it should look like wet you can see how smooth it is obviously until you start drying it this is what you're aiming for when you make it wet it should look like it's been clear coated Rock and roll. And over here guys, we've got a ready product. I apply uh, flow coat. The only thing different I do with the flow coat is I mix a little bit more thinners, probably about 30% with my clear coat just to flow it out a little bit better. And as always, I polish my paintwork in the end um, with uh, 1,000, 1,500, 3,000 grid paper and some polishing compound. This is ready product, ready for collection. Rock and roll guys, the parts are ready for collect and this tall gentleman over here is John, the owner of the bike. How are you doing buddy? Uh, what are you here? Terrified. <laughs> what do you think? What do you think of the job? Uh, uh, I sure I said Matt. I'm okay. Yeah, that's really good. Well impressed. Bastard. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, the logo is absolutely top though. Yeah, I think the logo it really makes it stand out, the whole thing. And I wasn't aware that actually that is old school Yamaha logo. You 
you made me aware of it. Yeah, so. that's like pretty motorbike that though. I think that's back in the days of like Is pianos, it? Victorian pianos. So yeah, cool. Some smart ass will go. That's not for bikes. That's for pianos. And then after I've chinned him, I'll walk away satisfied. <laughs> nice. No, I, I like it. I like the logo and I like the whole thing. I think the uh, Aston Martin white really stands it out as well. And the metallic on top of it just just goes really well. So I hope you like it. Yeah, I love it. Top draw. Good nice. stuff, man. High quality stuff. Excellent, man. Thanks very much, buddy. <laughs> Cheers, geezer.